What's going on guys, it's Loaf Lord back at it again with another scum video. I've been sliding in Tommy Slav's DMs trying to get any exclusive info for you scumbags. And guys, we've got some juicy stuff coming as well as some changes regarding Killbox, C4, and more. Tommy Slav said you can expect most of these changes and additions in the next couple weeks. I'm also going to be taking a look at Noodle's Reddit post where she goes in and gives us some more insider information. So big shout out to her for always staying on top of the game and gathering this information for us. We really appreciate it. And thank you to Tommy Slaw for giving me this information. If you guys want more exclusive leaks, gameplay videos, and other scum content, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you stay up to date while you're helping your boy loaf out. Anyways, let's get into it. We're going to be starting off with some exclusive information from Tommy Slaw. First up, they're going to be reworking how security cards are spawned. Currently, there are too many key cards around. This has to do with how the spawning system works, and they had to make sure that security cards for kill box areas are really hard to find. In the following update, you will see that it will be much harder to find a card. The goal here is to make players get out of secure places and risk more. Also, from now on, security cards will only be spawned in locked lockers within police stations and military locations and bunkers. And I personally think this is a great change. I mean, there's already people that are just continuously farming key cards, including me, I'm not going to lie. So it's great to see that we're going to see that get balanced out. And anything to get players out of their bases, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really open for it. Next up, we have the C4 rework. From the feedback they've received, and they said they've got a lot of feeds arriving, it was obvious that acquiring C4 can be really fast. Apparently, they had some reports saying that it's way harder to find a Claymore than it is to locate a security card and get C4. So from now on, C4 will be a craftable item consisting of four different parts that have to be acquired before assembling functional C4. This was done for several reasons. They want to balance the time needed to build a functional base and time needed to destroy one. With multiple parts that are spawned randomly, it will take more time for players to make C4. This will, again, force players to get out their bases and try to find parts of their own or maybe trade duplicates within other clans. They've also noted that if the process is too difficult or takes too much time, they might reduce the number of ingredients to three or even two. Maybe increase the damage that C4 does to bases. We're still in early access, guys, so we're still testing things out. We gotta find that sweet spot. Next up, we have the kill box balancing. Here, they will have several things that will be changed. We've noticed that well-trained players can easily solve the kill box in a very short time, while less experienced players have many issues being unable to defuse a single door. Good thing is that even solo players have managed to solve the kill box completely, which is great since the whole point of C4 was to make more balance between groups and solo players or small parties. The next steps will include the following things. No crafting will be allowed within the kill box area. So no more bringing in all those damn bobby pins into the kill box and once you run out of lock picks then you're gonna go start crafting some more. Zappers will be adjusted depending on the amount of players within the kill box area. More players, the bigger the damage they will do. Also, time for solving the kill box will be 15 minutes for two players and for each subsequent player, it will be reduced by one minute. So if you brought 10 people into that kill box, you got five minutes to do that thing. Tommy Slav also said that gas will start on approximately 50% of the initial time. So if you brought 10 dudes in there, you have five minutes to do the kill box. And at two minutes and 30 seconds, that gas is gonna be let out and yeah, it's not gonna be pretty. Players with low constitution will die faster. And that's just adding more depth to the constitution, which is great. This next change regarding the kill box, I think is gonna be really good for new players that are just getting into the game or for people that are just not good at the defusal minigame. Time for the door defusal will be increased by 250 milliseconds per failure. This will allow players with a bit slower reflexes to have a chance at opening doors. Punishments for failures will be as they are currently. Skillful players who open in the first try will avoid the punishment. Now I know a lot of people have been asking for this for a while and we're finally getting the mind detectors. We're also getting bomb suits as well as glove mind detectors. And uh, all you smart players using your little chest to, you know, hunt for little mines, that's going to be taken out. One of them will be craftable and will work on batteries, and bomb suits will also be introduced. It will protect players from the C4 blast if you fail the C4 defusal. It will also limit the player's movement pace and provide protection against bullets. It will limit the amount of gear that you can carry with it and will most likely cause hyperthermia if being worn a lot. Insulating gloves functionality will soon be available giving lock pickers protection from zappers but also making the lock picking a bit more difficult and clumsier. Next up, night vision goggles and other electrical appliances will now work on batteries. So no juice, no night vision. And since lock picking and diffusing bombs has been, uh, you know, really popular this past month, 
they're making some changes to the diffusing practice board with a custom timer so you'll be able to set up a time and practice. Also, the lock picking practice board will have the option for any type of lock on there too. So you'll be able to practice lock picking gold locks, which is awesome because sometimes I'm at base right before a kill box and I'm just doing the lock picking board, but it's rusty. So it's a lot easier and it's kind of not the same thing and they don't have the same window to open up the lock, you know? So I'm excited to see these changes and uh, additions kind of balance out the game a little bit more. But moving on, we're going to be taking that Noodles Reddit post, and I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to go check it out for yourselves. Now this next little part isn't something that's going to be coming to the game necessarily, but I thought it was worth highlighting. A player posted a complaint about the use of bots on private servers, especially those that charge money. There was some confusion around these somehow being related to the official servers, and one of the devs gave this reply. We do not in any way approve of people charging money for their bots. It was okay while the whole thing was done via donations, since those do not force anything on people and people can freely support the creators of the bot. If this does not cease, we will develop our own bot and give it for free to private server owners to use. On a side note, I do not see how this game is pay to win since what you're referring to is done on a private server which has nothing to do with us. If people run a server, they can make their own rules there. It's your own fault if you continue to play on that server and then complain about the rules. Official servers are not pay to win, nor will they ever be. And I'm pretty sure there are a lot of private servers that do not endorse such rules and behaviors either. And man, that's, that's big facts right there. Those are really, really big facts right there. Like, if you're having a bad experience on that server, then why, why are you continue going back? It doesn't make any sense. For a, If you want a PvP server, there's tons of different servers that you can choose from. If you want a PvP one, I'm sure there's one without a bot. Or maybe suck it up and play on an official server, or maybe a low loot server, or any other server that doesn't have bots. Sometimes the shit just doesn't make sense to me. Moving on, Noodle touches on base building. You may notice the house textures don't match the wall. This will change in upcoming iterations. The recent update was just for the first base building. We will see more options for door materials, big metal ones and the like that offer more protection. Now players have been reporting more issues being in the city. Bunny had this to say about the performance. The clutter around the city is directly tied to the stuttering problems you are experiencing. The city itself is massive, and when it comes to multiplayer survival games on Unreal Engine, we're practically pioneering the genre when it comes to the scale of the map and the amount of things on it. This is where we are having some issues when it comes to performance. It takes time for everything to stream in, and thus you can experience those periodic hiccups while moving through the city. The clutter around the city is put there to make players slow down and thus give the game time to load assets in and reduce the clutter, besides just looking cool and apocalyptic. Migration to the new engine has also created some extra work for them, but you can expect the next packs to increase performance by a solid amount. The city itself should feel much better. And I'm glad this is being addressed. Even my buddies and I, we have pretty similar specs, but for some reason his, uh, his computer just drops to like 30 FPS while mine stays at, you know, 60 to 70, drop into like 50 when they're, you know, we're loading in new assets. But I'm glad to see that they're optimizing the game and trying to get it to the best experience for people to enjoy it. Because the city is beautiful. The city is one of my favorite maps. It just sucks that a lot of people don't like going there because the performance is, is a little bit meh. At some point, players will be able to open locks by breaking them. This will include locks on player-made cabinets and chests. This will depend on your strength attribute and the tool used. However, this option will make a lot of noise and you can also run in the risk of damaging or even destroying the loot inside. At some point in the game, you will be able to drag your defeated enemy to another location. And dude, I, I'm super excited for that. I mean, imagine if you're in an RP server and you just kill someone, you're just like, I'm taking his body to the river and I'm dumping it where it belongs. Or even if you're out in the open and you killed someone, you know, you could pick that dude up and kind of go to more of a secure location to loot him. There are plans to have camping gear in the future. This will most likely begin with sleeping bags that you can carry around with you. And there is a possibility of a sleeping feature, but it will need a little bit of thought about how it would work within this game. And I think that would be a great, a great, great addition to the game. I mean, there's some people, I mean, including myself, that have logged out in other people's bases because you had to wait the 24 hours to take over a flag. But you know, if they have the sleeping bag in and you fall asleep on the ground, that person logs in, they'll see your ass and they'll kill you, which is great. It's a little bit more balanced and it will stop players from logging out in bunkers and stuff. Touching a little bit on animals, snakes will be coming. And in the future, you may also see animals attack the puppets. And I think that's gonna be great. That's just gonna make the world feel a little bit more alive. Stackable items are being worked on and this may take some time. They will need to be implemented with a wipe as some of these items could crash the game. 
These will have to be added one step at a time with certain items added before others. It will help with any errors or unnecessary wipes. And this next one I'm really excited about because I've heard them talk about this a while back when the game was, you know, just being released. And uh, at some point, we will see players that have been killed begin to roam around as puppets. This will have to wait until the inventory system has been reworked before attempting to implement something like this though. They're adding ranking within squads. Not only will squads get their own customized insignia, but the members within your squad will have special privileges and permissions tied to their rank. For example, lower ranks will not be able to access chests, wardrobes that have been locked by other members, or destroy base building elements created by them. Nice. New puppets. Noodle's already spoken about these in another post, but we know that they will be getting even more creepier versions of these guys. Some will lack limbs, some will have prosthetics that help them run faster, jump higher, hit harder, or carry melee weapons. This is it's kind of getting into some cyberpunk territory, damn it. And I like it. Lanterns will also be able to be repaired in the next update, most likely with the toolbox. Talking about wolves, there have been times where you encounter a pack and you have absolutely no chance of getting away. They are too quick to stun and with the melee hit detection being a bit iffy, players are finding them frustrating. The wolves were added before the animal AI was finished and it's still being worked on, but in the meantime, the devs have suggested that they will reduce their stun chance and attack intervals, making them less frustrating. They then spoke about the melee and unarmed combat. These systems are being worked on and each will receive an overhaul. The combat system will include more fighting styles, not just boxing. And I'm waiting for some jujitsu, you know what I'm saying? They will also be implementing some realistic damage visuals to the characters too. So I'm guessing we're gonna actually be seeing players' teeth get knocked out or maybe some black eyes. Now there have been a lot of questions regarding the wipe for 0.5 and so far, nothing has been confirmed. We will hopefully see a return of the fog that was in the Halloween update but it will be part of the weather system in game. You will likely see it in early hours of the morning or tied to the dynamic environments that will come in the future. We could also see stronger winds. Now this part I'm actually kind of excited about, and I know a lot of players will be too. In-game events slash death matches will be moved to areas outside the map. So no more getting caught in the crossfire while looting for Gorge. And when people started complaining about this, I didn't really pay any mind to it, to be honest. I always thought it just made the world feel a little bit more alive and lived in. Me and a couple buddies were in B1, you know, looting the police station and stuff. And uh, there was two other players. We got into a firefight with these players. We killed them and they came running back. They spawned into an event. I killed one of them and we're like, yeah, that's cool. But they killed two of my buddies and I had to hide for the rest of the event. So that's just taking out the potential exploit of, uh, you know, events. And so I'm really excited to see that change food spoilage. So far, the only way to slow food degradation is to store it in a chest. In the future, we may see other ways to preserve food, maybe something like smoking the meat or maybe salting it to, you know, keep it fresh. Or hell, even just put it in a fridge. Improvised fridge, anyone? They spoke a little bit on the metabolism system, and the rework is coming along quite nicely. There is no time frame, but we do know it could come before or after point five, and they are looking towards the end of this year, beginning of the next year, to implement it. And I know you scumbags like your admin controls, so they're adding an option to configure the amount of locked cabinets in the game and how they are locked. You'll be able to turn them all off if you prefer. Admins will also have more options to configure loot on their server. They haven't gone into much detail, but maybe this means you can increase, decrease for certain sectors, control the health of items spawn, control the rarity of certain items, or stop items from spawning altogether. There also might be a possibility to make certain sectors, areas, into safe zones. And Noodle, you said it best. This will be amazing for PvE and RP servers. So I'm excited to see if that change does come. Oh yeah, and Tomislav also showed off some fishies. But that's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. I know it was a lot of information, but I'm excited to see all of these changes and additions come to Scum. So tell me, guys, what changes or features are you excited to see coming to Scum? Have you been exploited by some douche going into an event and killing you? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to everyone popping out to the video. I really do appreciate it. I'm Loaf Lord. Stay toasty out there.